Well, hello there. If you struggle to render white products on white backgrounds, this is your lucky day because in the next few minutes I'm going to show you a few tricks that will take you from something like this, not too good, to something like this, which is way better if you ask me. Let's jump straight into it. To figure out what to aim for in Keyshot, I took this rendering of the Apple AirPods and uh, by using this color picker, I got some clues for what to aim for in Keyshot. So by anchoring the, the darkest values and the mid values and the brightest values, we can try and recreate that in Keyshot and uh, in the end get something like this rendering. So if we start with the mid values, I pick the color here, we can see that it's uh, about 90% uh, of brightness, so it's not white at all. And if we also look at the distribution of the red, green, and blue values, we can see that we have uh, so red, a bit more green, and even more blue, which means that this um, material has a blue tint. We can also see the dot here that it's in the blue region. Um, this can be done by adding some blue to the lighting or even adding some blue to the material color. We can do both in Keyshot, and I will do it in the material. The brightest, or the, uh, sorry, the darkest values are around here, and uh, we can see that those are around 70. So we can try and shoot for that when we set up the materials and lighting in Keyshot. The brightest value, the uh, reflections that we got here and up here, is close to being 100% white. We have like, it's like, uh, here it is. Nope. Yeah, there's like one strip of pixels that is completely white, so completely blown out. And the rest is just a few cents below that. So we got to make sure that we don't blow out anything, or at least just only have a tiny fraction of blown out pixels that is completely white pixels. If we also look at the distribution of these uh, highlight, we can see that they have uh, the highlights inside the silhouette of the product. So inside here and inside the silhouette here, so um, that ensures that we have some dark pixels telling the shape of the products against a completely white background. And I've had a look at other white products and white backgrounds renderings as well, and it seems like they all do it this way to make sure that the highlights is inside the product and not bleeding over the edges to make sure that the silhouette is easy readable. With that, let's jump into a Keyshot and recreate this stuff. So I went ahead and deleted all the good stuff, and uh, now we're going to try and, re try and recreate it. Um, here I have the uh, material, and I have made it a multi-material, so uh, to create a, another instance, I hit this uh, duplicate material here, and call it good. Whoops. All right. So it's a paint material, we have a roughness of zero, we have this completely shiny material, and uh, the color. Let's have a look at that. Right now it's at 100%. And as we saw in <coughs> the Apple AirPod rendering before, AirPod rendering, um, we should aim for something uh, a bit lower. So let's try and go ahead with 90%. And for the hue, um, let's try look at this. We have a hue of 228. Let's go ahead and type that in. And the saturation was around one or 2%. Uh, I don't want this to come off as too blue, so I will just stick with 1%. If you don't see these uh, hue saturation value sliders, uh, you might have to change this drop down to HSV, okay? So let's try with that. In the end, it's... Uh, a dynamic combination of both materials and lighting, how this, uh, how the end result is going to look. So try and start with something first and then all, you can always go back and adjust uh, when you're done with everything. So that's it for the material. Then let's go uh, take a look at the lighting. Create a new environment and call it good too. And um, leave everything here as is and go to the HDRI editor. The background I want to uh, make completely white, hit OK, and by using the uh, the color picker here from the color, I can see what 
values we got at the moment. So we can see that the value is 81 and we want to aim for something like uh, 90 for a neutral area. But before fine tuning that, I want to add in my highlights uh, to add to position them where I want them to be. <coughs> so I add a pin and I drag it where I want it roughly. So I want one on this side and I want it to uh, be rectangular and I want to adjust the sizing so it flows from top to bottom of this uh, jug here that I, by the way, got from dimensiva.com. There's a link in the description below. Like this. And let me add some fall off so it's not the same color all, um, all across. I'll do quadratic. So we get a bit of fall off, looks good. Then I add in a another pin, just right click this one and make a duplicate. Whoops, not move the camera, plug it. Go to pin two, hit the aim icon here and drag it over here. So sometimes it might be easier to see if you make the, uh, the background color black or something while you do this. Uh, makes it easier to see where the highlight will fall. And I think perhaps something like this and then make it a bit wider so these two will blend together. I think this is pretty good. And again, I will, yeah, the quadratic is already on because we made a duplicate. So go ahead and change the background color to white again. And now let's have a look at the uh, the values that we got. So I take the color here, so I can make the so I can use the color bigger and look at the values. So right now we add ninety five at the neutral area, so to speak, and it's uh, too much uh, compared to what we saw in the uh, Apple Airport rendering. So I will take this uh, brightness down and check again what we got. Cool. Yeah, so we got 90, almost precise. So I'll stick with that. <coughs> then we need to adjust the uh, the highlight areas. Um, and also the shadow area. So this uh, shape is a bit more simple than we got on the AirPods. So we don't have this uh, area where, it's, uh, where there's a lot of shadow going on. So I don't want to worry too much about that. Um, but if we have a look at the highlights here, we are only at 90 compared to the 90 at the neutral area. So we can bump that up a bit. And over here, we are close to being burned out completely, but it could use just a notch up. So let's go ahead and do that. So pin number one, that's this one. Uh, let's take the brightness and, uh, Add it up to 0.5 or something like that and take the pin number two and also increase the brightness by 0.1. Seems a bit too much actually, so 0 0.05. Let's uh, check what we got now. Quite good. And because we erased these um, these pins, the brightness of the pins, the, the general brightness is also being raised. So we can go in and take the background uh, down a bit again, because now we are at 92, whereas we were at 90 before. So uh, let me also check this last highlight and it's burned out. It's a bit wide, big uh, wide area that we got. So I will take this down, actually keep it at one, take the background down even further which will also help us make these uh, shadow areas darker. And then I can take the pin number two up just a single point. And uh, let's check. Better that it's a smaller area that is completely burned out now. And we have got 90 in the neutral areas and again, 
this one could be a bit brighter. So I will do that as the last change. 0.6 or 1.7. I think that is pretty good. So I will stick with that for now. And I hope that you can use this, uh, this approach to uh, adjust materials and lighting on your white products that you need to render on white backgrounds. A final comment, and we did this on a completely shiny, smooth uh, material. And if we change the uh, the roughness to 0.3 or something like that, you can see that it changes a bit the, um, the look of the product and also the lighting as well. Um, if we take now the color picker and with the values, they are slightly lower than before, at least here in the highlights, they don't come through as much. So depending on your material, uh, you might need to adjust uh, the pins and the background as well. Um, and it might be good to begin with the, uh, the roughness and um, specularity of the material that you're going to end up with, just to say that. I hope that these tricks are useful to you, and uh, until next time, take care.